it's cold, it's rainy, it's sort of a dreary day, but I've got ribs to make. There's only one problem, but we'll get to that. First, gotta get the Weber kettle going. So I have the Weber kettle set up with the slow and sear here, some foil for catching drips here, my ambient temperature probe here. And I just need to get the charcoal going in the slow and sear. And for that, I'm gonna use my propane torch. So yes, I said I was gonna do ribs, but these are the ribs. This is a rack of baby back ribs that I cut in half and put in the freezer about three months ago and completely forgot about. I found them this morning and decided I wanted to use them, but I also wanted to try a little experiment. Now, I've cooked frozen ribs before in the electric smoker, and that's very easy because you put them in, temperature's easy to control, they thaw out, you season them, then it becomes pretty similar to any other rib cook. It's rainy and wet outside today. I can't run the electric smoker out here, but I can run my Weber kettle. And so that's what I'm using today to cook these frozen ribs. Now, they are in a solid block together. I couldn't even pry them apart. So they're gonna have to go on like this for a while until they're thawed enough to separate. And then we can move on to actually treating them just like normal ribs. As you can see, I have my Thermapro transmitting unit inside a plastic bag to help protect it from any sort of blowing rain that we get. The kettle's at 244 right now. I'm gonna try and keep it between 225 and 250 today. And that's usually fairly easy to do when you're using the slow and sear. It really works well when you're talking about keeping a stable temperature over long cooks. So let's go ahead and get these ribs on so they can <laughs> start thawing a little bit. I am just gonna place them right here. So in about 30 minutes, we'll come out, see if it's thawed enough to separate these, and then we'll have our two half racks to work with. My top vent is set at just about three quarters open, and my bottom vent is set at one third open. Now, once we get those half racks separated, once they've thawed a bit, we're still gonna have to wait and see if the meat is thawed enough to start our seasoning process. And that's when it becomes traditional, adding the rub, things like that. At that point, I will also add some cherry wood on the kettle to give some smoke flavor. But there is absolutely no point in adding seasoning until those ribs are thawed enough and moist enough on the outside to accept it. If they're still frozen, the seasoning's just gonna slide right off. So I'll bring you back in about a half an hour when we check these. All right, it's been about a half an hour. So let's give a look at these ribs and see how they're doing. Definitely getting some thawing on the outside here. Let's see if we can pry them apart gently here. Just using our tongs to slide between. I'm gonna switch over to the spatula, see if I can get down in here a little more. I think they're gonna need a little more time to thaw before we can separate them, so I'm gonna get the lid back on. Go another 20 minutes. All right, we've had another 20 minutes here. Let's see how we're doing. This time I brought a regular table knife here just to see if this will get me to slide in there a little easier. There we go. Ah, good. Two little half racks. Now I still want these to go for a while to thaw a little bit more to accept the rub on the outside. Uh, the one that was sort of pressed up against the bottom bones of the other is still pretty solid there. So another 15, 20 minutes, these should soften up enough to accept that rub. But I am gonna start adding some smoke to this right now. Get my piece of cherry in here. All right, our piece of cherry's catching. Let's get the lid back on. And in about 20 minutes, we're gonna put some rub on these ribs. All right, we've given these ribs another 20 minutes to soften up a bit. I think it's about time for that rub. Let's see here. Oh yeah, see, softened up nicely. Moisture on the surface. These are ready for some rub. To do that, I'm gonna remove them from here, get them in a foil pan, and we'll get that rub on. I'm working in some tight quarters here because of the rain and the side patio cover that I'm under. So if I reach in front of the camera, please forgive me. 
What I'm using today is a Flaps 20 rub, their Thriller rub. It's got a bit of a southwestern flavor to it, and I really like that. I'm gonna get a good coating on these ribs, front and back. Now these ribs do have the membrane on them. I did not remove the membrane before I froze them. So we're just gonna have to roll with that. I just love the smell of this rub. All right, let's get these back on the kettle. Now, these are ready to truly become ribs. All right, let's get the lid on. And I'm gonna let them go with smoke here for probably two hours before I check them. I wanna add one more piece of cherry in here now. We're gonna let these guys get going. See you in about two hours. All right, we've been running for two hours since we rubbed those ribs. Let's see how we're doing. Looking good. Developing nice bark on there. I wanna check how our tenderness is going here. It's getting there, still, still some resistance. We definitely have more time. What I wanna do right now is I wanna hit these with some sauce. What I'm going to use today is something I just happened to find at the store when I was walking down the aisle. It's this Heinz Carolina Vinegar style tangy barbecue sauce. I'm going to give it a shot. Just going to get some on each one here. Brush that around. And I don't need to add any more moisture to the chamber. It is very humid today, very moist with all this rain. And I'm guessing these ribs may have another hour, hour and a half to go. Remember, we went about 50 minutes as we thawed them, so they cooked a little bit at that point. Another two hours just running with the rub. Now, I also want to hit this with a little more rub here on top of this barbecue sauce because I really like this rub. And I'm going to put one more piece of cherry on because with that barbecue sauce added to those ribs, there's a lot of moisture there to accept smoke. Smoke loves moisture. I always like to see if I can get a little more smoke flavor after we add sauce or spritzing. All right, our cherry is catching. Gonna get our lid back on. I'm gonna check these again in about an hour. All right, it's been another hour, so we're at three hours really of cook time after we rubbed. We had that initial 50 minutes of thawing and softening. So almost total of four hours in the kettle. Let's see how we're doing. Really nice color here. Well, let's check tenderness. Now, a lot of times when you're checking tenderness on racks of ribs, you can do it by picking them up to seeing flecks. And you'll see some flecks, but these are pretty short because they're half racks, so you're not gonna see that pronounced flex. So really, it's gonna be about probing to see how tender they are. Get between the bones here. Oh, very tender. Yeah, these are done. <laughs> you know, just under four hours total, really, three hours after they'd begun to thaw, or after they thawed. So, very good here, yeah. All right, let's get these off, get them inside, and have a taste. Well, here they are, our baby back ribs, two little half racks that we thawed on the Weber kettle, then cooked on the Weber kettle. And now I've just got to decide which one I'm gonna cut into, and I think I'm gonna go for this guy right here. So let me move the other one out of the way. And we are just gonna slide this one over. Now, I could flip it over and cut easily between the bones, but I like to cut from the top if possible because I don't wanna knock any of this nice bark off. So let me just see if I can get a good visual here. Let's try right here. There's one. Let's see if we can get lucky. We got lucky. All right, let's take a look inside there. Oh, nice. Decent little smoke ring there. It's not over pronounced or anything. You're going to get a lot more if you're starting with a rib that isn't frozen. But I got to say, pretty good. Let's check our juiciness. Again, I don't always like to press down and knock all the juice out, but let's just see. Yep, we got some good juice there. All in all, pretty pleased with this, but there's only one way to tell how we truly did. So it's time to taste. All right, here's one of our ribs. One of the things I always like to see how it turned out is, does it have a little bit of a bite to it? I'm not a guy who likes fall off the bone ribs. Nothing wrong with that. And I've had darn good fall off the bone ribs, but I like a little bit of a bite so that when you bite into it, you pull the meat away from the bone, it doesn't just fall. So let's see how we did. Mm. 
That is really good. I really, really like that rub. And the addition of that sort of Carolina vinegar barbecue sauce on the outside, nice tang to it. Really good mix here. And just the way I like it, with bite, pull away from the bone without falling off the bone. Not as much of the smoke flavor as I would have wanted. I understand that with the, you know, starting off with them frozen, but there is a little hint of that cherry in there. I think cherry goes good with pork. It's probably my second favorite after hickory. I just think hickory goes so well with pork, but there's not a lot to complain about with this rib. Total cook time, including thawing, was just under four hours. Our kettle temperature was running right around 250 the entire time. It ranged somewhere between 230 and 260. I set the vents at the beginning to a third open on the bottom and three quarters open on the top and just left them there the entire time. Added wood and that was about it. And we ended up with some great ribs. Mm. Now with that membrane on there, you do have a little bit more of a pull when you're biting through the bottom part of the rib. So if you are gonna freeze ribs, you might wanna take that membrane off first. I just didn't think about it. I forgot when I froze them. They were an extra rack of ribs that just decided to freeze for a while. But I gotta tell you, it doesn't affect the flavor on these at all. All it affects is that bite when you pull your bottom teeth through there. Darn good flavor. And as you can see, the meat's pulling away from the bone very easily. So if you have a rack of ribs that you need to cook and you haven't had time to thaw them, you can do it out on the kettle. You could do it on the gas grill using similar methods. I've done it in an electric smoker. Don't hesitate to try it. Just give it some time, some good flavoring. You'll end up with some great ribs. Mm.